the lack of sleep makes it impossible to adhere to any goals. Uh, my body gets so tired that I can't even pick up my phone to log my food, which is crap this week, by the way, because we're not cooking, which is huge. So what I would suggest to everyone is number one, sleep isn't wasted time. I hear a lot of messaging mm -hmm. around, you need to be more intentional about that eight hours a day. It's a third of your life that you're just wasting on sleep. Yeah, not really. Uh, neurologically, your brain needs sleep to be able to process memories. Mm -hmm. It needs sleep to be able to reset, rebuild neuropathways. Um, it affects your nervous system hugely if you don't sleep. Your immunity Neuro too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, lack of sleep has been linked to a zillion diseases, including cardiovascular disease and dementia. So not sleeping is a great way to put yourself in a really bad situation later in life. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Dr. M. How you doing? I'm doing really well. I'm excited for our chat today because it's a good one. It is a good one, and it's weirdly, um, it was prescient of us to schedule it for today because I, in fact, haven't been sleeping very well. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, so for everyone listening, today's topic is all about sleep and rest and the importance of that, not only in losing weight, but just living a healthy lifestyle, right? Because that's right. what we want is we want the health. So tell us a little bit, let's start with our like feel good moment eye opener, and then we'll get in a little bit more to the insomnia. So do you want to go first with that? Yeah, I feel good moment, um, which Dr. Morgan knows about, but um, I had my job interview on Friday and it went really well and I was invited to be a finalist. So I'm in the kind of last step, um, feeling really good about it. And yeah, my eye opener of the week is it this week really reiterated to me the importance of not only rest but um, finding the right medical professional for yourself. Um, we'll talk about it a little bit more later, but mm -hmm. I've been in a lot of pain and I haven't found really a good solution for now. I have a lot of people that are like surgery, this surgery, that, but you know, that's down the road. It's not this second of now. Um, but I did finally find a doctor um, actually yesterday who is going to be able to pull everything into a single clinic and will help me control my pain in a really active right now in this moment manner. So, mm -hmm. which is really important. I just had a YouTube video come out and like on Monday, I think, and it was about pain and inflammatory foods. And what I say is pills and surgery is never where we should start or stop with pain management, but there is a place for acute pain management. And that's definitely where you're at right now. And so I think I'm really glad that you found someone. And I also think it's great when you just find a doctor who really wants to dig deep and understand everything and mm -hmm. give you the time of day to listen and like truly come up with the best plan of care for you. So I'm really excited that you did that. Right. Um, so my feel good moment for the week, there were a lot of them. Um, I think that my feel good and my eye opener kind of go together a little bit, but I'd say the big feel good moment was just playing with my kids. Um, Dawson is what almost two and a half and he's so much fun. You know, he's riding his little four wheel bike and he's playing hopscotch and the weather is beautiful here in Nebraska. And it's just so much fun. And Leah is just a sweet little princess. So I'm just really enjoying, you know, being a mom and, um, watching them grow. And then, uh, that's kind of, that ties into the feel good moment. Uh, and the eye opener where I, I finally took some time off for even if it's just an hour. Like for me, I've been working um, really, really, really hard for about two and a half years building my business. And I, I think I've taken like one day off in that amount of time. And I love work, but I also am recognizing that that's not where my creative juices flow from, right? In order to get new ideas, you have to kind of like give your head a break. And then also recognizing, you know, my big priority is my faith and I need to invest more heavily in that with my time and my energy. 
And so I went on a God walk yesterday for an hour. I pushed Leah in her stroller and I shut the audiobooks off. I shut the podcast off because even in that time, I'm still doing something with my business. I'm still learning something. And so I just was craving silence. You know, I was craving just being present to the moment and not like thinking ahead or thinking back. And I felt like I got a lot of insights on that walk. Um, I would say that the a couple big ones were, you know, stop wanting more or like replace your, your want for more with gratitude for what you already have. That was a big one for me. So, and then the other one was that sometimes I think that my worry or my anxiety, because we all have worry and anxiety, especially during COVID, I think that some of that is actually impatience. And I think that, you know, God reminded me when you feel anxious and you feel worried, a lot of times it's because you're being impatient. So why don't you stop telling yourself, don't worry about it. Stop telling yourself, um, stop being anxious and start telling yourself, be patient because that worry and anxiety was like the superficial level of like what the real problem was, which was being impatient. So I don't know. It was a very kind of a deeper, you know, eye opener in that regard. But I feel like that's really applicable to weight loss. And I tell a lot of my clients, you know, stay the course, be patient, good things take time. And I needed that reminder for myself that it doesn't matter what the context is. I think, you know, we can all, and I, and I was kind of challenged to like, think of three different things in your life that are great, that took a lot of time and work. My husband and I met three and a half years before we even started to date seriously. It took 18 months for my, my son to call me mama. You know, this business has taken years to, to think of and develop and build. It's like good things take time and work and you're not, you, you have to stay the course. And so I needed that reminder myself because I give that reminder out to a lot of people related to weight loss. And then here's a funny eye opener for you. I know I'm talking a lot this morning, but, um, so I really try to do like 10 minutes of strength training five days a week. That's kind of the commitment that I've made for exercise during this season of my life. That's the time that I can give to it. And I added that up. That's 43 hours a year. If you just do 10 minutes a day, which is over, is that almost two days, Sarah? Is that 43 hours? Yeah. Yeah, almost two days full is days. Hours. Yeah, so little habits can add up. Anyways, it was a long day. I was exhausted. I really just wanted to sit on the couch and watch Sneaky Pete, which is a great show on Amazon Prime. And uh, I said, nope, darn it. You're going to get up and you're going to do your strength training. And then you can sit on the couch. <laughs> so I did. And I grabbed my dumbbell and I'm 12 squats in. And the light fixture above my head loosens and I see it out of the corner of my eye and I back up and it shatters all over the ground 12 squats in and I'm like this is a sign that I am not supposed to be exercising tonight because <laughs> wow. I almost got jacked in the head with a light that shattered so then we had glass everywhere and we had to vacuum it and pick it up and exactly what you want to do at the end of a long day and I was very tempted to actually say to myself that's a sign you can take tonight off and I didn't now I did decide to do the rest of the exercises laying down, but I still did my exercises. I just did some like leg lifts and whatnot. Cause, and I think it's a really important note. Like you can still do something and it's like, it wasn't a great workout. I wasn't sore the next day. Like I say you should be, but I did it, you know, and I showed up for myself. And I think that that's really important to tell people is like show up imperfectly so those are my, I had a few eye openers I wanted to share this week. The only thing I would say is um, taking a single break in two and a half years. I mean, I've done more, just a little bit. Well, it, it's not serving you. No. Because my family. You that you're starting a business, yes, but you're also basically running your family 24 hours a day. Yeah. So... I think as many God walks at whatever faith you believe in for those listing um, or not faith meditation walks, whatever you need to do to at least get out of your head a little bit, do the thing. And what did you say before we started? You said it was like giving yourself a mental break. Yeah. I mean, 
your brain is a computer if you want to look at it that way and your computer needs to reset fairly often for updates yeah so your brain yeah i think and we if you're dealing with insomnia and i'm dealing with an infant neither of us are getting that like turn off at, at night so, so true. <laughs> that might be a good segue into talk about your insomnia and your struggle with this especially this re- week and recently yeah. So, uh, Dr. Morgan and I talked before we started about kind of where we always talk about where my health is during the week. So as you heard, I've had some pain and I haven't been sleeping well. And what that translates to is bad, not bad, unhealthier choices everywhere else. Um, you know, we eat as fast as we can so that we can sit on the couch and zone out. We, you know, I'm like, I need to stop because I, I'm so tired. I can't even make sense anymore. Um, so if I'm not my usual eloquent self, that may be why. But, you know, it, lack of rest is hugely important in so many ways. Um, Dr. Morgan and I talked about um, maybe at this period, I need to be able to find really, really, really fast healthy options and stock our cabinets with them for a while, just so that we aren't door dashing it, which is never going to be healthy. Um, So um, for us, you know, maybe um, protein bars, protein powder, which you can literally just throw on some yogurt, eat it and call it good. You know, that kind of stuff. Um, Dr. Marie, do you have any other ideas? I have so many. First of all, let's start with the DoorDash. Okay. What are your DoorDash uh, places of choice? Because I think it's really important to think about habit change and think about we want to make it as easy as possible. And I think what's easiest is to actually continue with the DoorDash, just making a different choice. So where do you guys t- tend to get DoorDash food from? Um, we honestly just pick a cuisine and, and get that. There are a few healthy options. We live in a smaller town. There are some healthier options. Um, They're not open late. And by late, in our town, people eat dinner at like six. Okay. So they're not open after eight o'clock usually, but that is something to think about. You know, we could order ahead. Yeah. Um, There's like a, there's a chain here called Zoe's Kitchen, which does just healthy Mediterranean food. Um, and you can get everything without sauce. So, or get it on the side. So that's an option. Um, our, you know, usually our choices are what is super fast, like Mm -hmm. pizza burgers, uh, tacos, whatever. Um, you know, and there are probably healthier options there if you remove some carbs and stuff, but the long and short of it is that if we're going to DoorDash, perhaps we should look into the healthier options. Yeah, that's, that's my first recommendation is look into the healthier options. Keep it simple on yourself. Um, you have to remember your why. You know, you have to remember you have a lot of pain. You're having insomnia. Your nutrition plays, plays to both of those. Um, and so if you can just remember why you want to make healthy food choices, I think that that will be more motivating than making the easier choice in the moment. So I think a meal batching would be really, really good too. And we've talked about that before. Is there a day a week that you could commit to making, for example, lunches or dinners? Like where do you feel like you guys usually make core choices? Is it lunch or dinner? Dinner. Okay. So for you, I would recommend meal batching your dinners because if that's your downfall of the day, you want to be as prepared as possible for that. Um, are you cool eating something different than Tony? To be honest, um, since I'm doing the fasting, there are just nights a week where I don't eat at all. So yes, is the answer to that. Um, I would agree with you. I think for me, Sunday morning, uh, I still get up at five o'clock on Sunday morning and Tony usually gets up at like 10. Yeah. So it's me five hours of time to do something else. So. Absolutely. And that's plenty of time. So I'm with you on these fast, easy meals. And I think that batching is really, really helpful. So this week, what we did, we did a chicken salad. 
Um, do you guys have Costco or a membership? We do. Yeah. Okay. So I know that it's probably for like the ultra, ultra health nuts. They might be like, I can't believe she's recommending this, but <laughs> here's the deal. They have this rotisserie chicken. Have you seen that? And it's already yeah. off the bone and it's packaged. And so what I do is I get that and I chop it up and I, and I, I used about half in a big batch of chicken salad and there's grapes, there's celery, there's some like mayo, Greek yogurt. I don't know. It's just good. And so I, I batched that and that made about eight servings. So that's one idea for a batched recipe. Um, oh, you could do that bowls. sounds really good actually because oh, it's yeah. still incredibly hot here. I don't know why, but it is. So yeah, chicken, so salad chicken salad sounds refreshing, okay. you know. Soups are so easy. And, and the thing is, Sarah, it's like you don't always have to make the healthiest meal batch because what, like, what is it comparing to burgers and pizza? Okay? Exactly. Um, so another great idea is chickpea pasta with some, I know that you don't like meat, but do you like meat in your spaghetti sauce? Not like usually. Meat sauce? A lot of times I do a, um, a turkey meatball. Okay. Um, and just chop basil and onions and garlic into it and then make a meatball out of it. Well, if that doesn't sound like too much work for me, it's easier just to like pound up the ground beef and make a big batch of spaghetti that you can have all week. Um, okay. Another idea, I had a freebie, I think it's weightlossforhealth.com forward slash lunch bowls. And that okay. has two lunch bowl recipes that have like chicken and roasted vegetables and quinoa. But here's the other thing, like Costco is such a great resource because it has like prepackaged like lunch bowls almost with like quinoa, there's like a Southwest bowl type of thing. And I would love to see you get more protein. So just then adding some chicken to it, putting some cheese on top. So I would, I would really challenge you to, to plan and prep your dinners if that's kind of the, the struggle or your lunches so that you can stick to your fasting schedule of 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Okay. So I think for you, it's just going to be a little bit more intentionality and planning. Okay. I really like the idea of grabbing already cooked rotisserie chicken. Oh yeah. Um, we have in the past just thrown a package of chicken breast into the crock pot, cooked mm -hmm. them all day, chopped it up and called it good, but that's even easier. Even easier. And I need that. We all need that. Right. I'm getting like the pre-chopped broccoli. You, you mentioned salad kits actually too at Costco. And so they have excellent salad kits. And we do, we talked about cutting the dressing with some olive oil because there's a lot of sugar in the dressing. So we do the same thing. And do you like salmon? I like fresh okay. salmon. Okay. Well, they yeah. have good salmon too that we'll get, we'll get it fresh and then we'll freeze it. But you could even just get the salad kit, put the chicken on top, get some, do you like nuts, like walnuts? Absolutely. So good. Get some good healthy fat. So you have your high protein, at least 30 to 35 grams a meal, high healthy fat and fiber. So we'll put some blackberries or raspberries on the salad too. Okay. My, my big point here is fuel your body. Fuel your body with good, 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 healthy food. And I okay. think that that'll make your pain better. That'll make your sleep better. Okay. So I'd like to, those are kind of my big recommendations for you is be intentional plan for the hardest meal of the day. Okay. Now moving on from that, did you want to touch a little bit more on your insomnia and yeah, your, your issues um, right now with rest and sleep? So I'm going to go out on a limb here uh, and say, you know what? I just know it's true. Sleep is more important than nutrition or exercise or anything else because you must be able to refuel your brain. You must have rested body to be able to do all of the other things we talk about. Plan meals, be resilient, do any of those things. You've got to get rest. I've had insomnia for about 10 years now. That doesn't mean I never sleep. It just means I have to be intentional about sleep. Um, I know for a fact that when you don't sleep, it starts to damage your brain. I know this because I've actually gone four or five days with zero sleep at all. Wow. Um, you, the inside of your head feels a lot like raw meat, kind of bruised 
and raw and every single thing that happens hurts. Um, your eyes start to get so tired and fatigued that you can barely use them. Um, people will speak to you and you won't be able to comprehend what they're saying. You have to really think about it. Uh, it is probably one of the worst states of being that you can be in, which is why it's used for torture, right? Mm -hmm. People torture people by not letting them sleep. Yes, that's unethical and horrible and we should never do that, but don't do it to yourself either. So for me, it was a pain thing this time. I okay. just couldn't sleep at all. No. Um, so now that we have the pain under control, I know for me, it's easier to sleep when I'm tired physically. Uh, so I, now I can maybe get some more exercise, uh, avoid like collapsing in the middle of the afternoon, laying in bed and just staring at the ceiling, not sleeping. Maybe I could get up and do something so that the, by the time eight or nine o'clock rolls around, I'm tired enough to just go to sleep. Um, for me, I will say the lack of sleep makes it impossible to adhere to any goals. Uh, my body gets so tired that I can't even pick up my phone to log my food, which is crap this week, by the way, because we're not cooking, which is huge. So what I would suggest to everyone is number one, sleep isn't wasted time. I hear a lot of messaging mm -hmm. around, you need to be more intentional about that eight hours a day. It's a third of your life that you're just wasting on sleep. Yeah, not really. Uh, neurologically, your brain needs sleep to be able to process memories. Mm -hmm. It needs sleep to be able to reset, rebuild neuropathways. Um, it affects your nervous system hugely if you don't sleep. Your immunity your, too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, lack of sleep has been linked to a zillion diseases, including cardiovascular disease and dementia. So not sleeping is a great way to put yourself in a really bad situation later in life. So my suggestions to everyone is number one, shut your phone off. There is no reason you should be looking at a screen after I would say within an hour of when you intend to go to sleep. Yes, there's emergencies and stuff, but don't, don't have your phone on really don't even have your t TV on be deliberate about, I'm going to wash my face, I'm going to put on my pajamas, read a book to the kids, you take the pets out, whatever it is you need to do, but that blue light makes it very difficult for your brain to shut off. It's stimulating to your brain, which is why it exists. And it, there are blue light lock, blocking glasses, yes. and the blue light really actually has been shown to lower melatonin levels, which is your sleepy hormone. And so that's why it can be harder to fall, to fall asleep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, the next thing I would do is no caffeine after noon and probably no food after dinner. I know mm -hmm. people like to snack, um, Dr. Morgan, uh, <laughs> after dinner, <laughs> but no, no. I just, you know, you eat at seven o'clock and then you shut it down. Or if you're in a fasting program, you know, nighttime is the best time to fast because you're doing nothing with that energy you're putting in your body. So I would definitely recommend that you're, what happens is you, you put food in your body and it goes to your stomach, but then you sit or lay down. It takes longer to digest. You've got blood going to your stomach instead of circulating quickly in your brain. So that renewal, that renewal system isn't happening. Also, it's very difficult to sleep when you have a big full stomach and it's just girly and things are happening and that's all you can concentrate on. Um, and GERD, so, like a lot of people struggle with heartburn. Absolutely. Because yeah. you're laying down. Yeah. Where does all that stuff have to go? But yeah. back where it came from, yeah. uh, <laughs> back to the farm, <laughs> right on girl. Um, I would also suggest, um, think, think about times you've had really, really great sleep, like amazing sleep for a lot of us. It's on vacation, right? Yes. Yes. What, what really contributed to that. You let go of stress on vacation. You get a ton of fresh air. You do a million things. You get tired. Um, 
and you're concentrating at the end of the day on sleep because you're tired. You want to get up quick the next day so you can go do something. That's a great mindset to be in when you go to bed. You know, I want to get up early tomorrow morning or get up when I get up so that I can go do some things I'm excited about. Mm -hmm. And today I'm tired. I got some fresh air. I'm going to go to sleep. For a lot of people, meditation is a great way uh, to get ready to sleep. Dr. Morgan was talking about her God walk. Mm -hmm. um, that's really active meditation, basically. She got messages because her brain was open to be messaged. And I had to actively open it. I had, that means that I had to actively shut out any other thoughts about work that would pop into my head. Right. Or thoughts about anything else. And so it, it, the word active meditation is very true because otherwise you're just going to get kind of crap thoughts coming into your head that aren't going to be rejuvenating. Exactly. Journaling, hey, I think journaling is a really good idea too. Absolutely. From an active meditation standpoint. So when we write things out, like we write slower than we think. And so it's a really nice way to kind of slow the brain down and journal about your day or journal about any worries that you have. Right. Um, that's something my mom always told me, Morgan, if you can't sleep, just get up and write about it. And I'm like, no, mom, I don't need to do that. But I, when I do it, it really helps. I mean, sometimes our parents are right. What are you going to do? They're right almost all of the time. At least my yeah. mom. Are, are you just saying that because you want your children to say that about you later? Oh, no. Ah. My mom really is <laughs> pretty much a saint. Yeah. yeah. I, I definitely recommend journaling. And I know a lot of people that hate journaling and I get mm -hmm. that. So instead of regurgitating your day, if that's not what you want to do, yeah. highly recommend a gratitude journal. Mm -hmm. Gratitude journals do a couple things. They give you perspective. Um, yeah, your day was crap, but here are three great things that happened today or three great aspects of the day itself. Um, the other thing they do is put you in a positive frame of mind. Negativity is a downward spiral and your brain starts to just cycle. It's kind of like circling the drain. So it's very difficult to break that cycle when you're trying to sleep. That's mm -hmm. why people lay in bed and just endlessly cycle through crap. Yeah. You know, it's, a, it's circling the drain. Totally. If you can get your brain into a place that's at least neutral, if not positive, sleep is possible and it will be much, much better. Um, on LinkedIn, I sometimes see people who are like, you know, right before you go to bed, think of a problem or something so that your brain is thinking about it before you go to sleep, while you're sleeping and you wake up with a solution. Okay. Yeah, that works for people. I do that sometimes and I write an article. I will give myself the topic before I go to bed and wake up with the whole article written in my head. Don't recommend that. Not great sleep. Yeah. Productive. Yes. I try to just shut out all of my problems. And it's right? interesting. You said that you sleep better when your body's tired. Absolutely. I sleep better when my brain is tired. So I find that if I don't get some sort of mental stimulation, and I think for a lot of moms who... When you're home with your kids, you're busy, but it's not like your brain is busy. Right. And so for me, listening to the books or the podcast like really works to get my brain intellectually stimulated on those days. But at the same time, you have to shut it down sometimes. Yeah. I, I have to say I've never been in a situation where my brain gets tired. Um, that's just the kind of brain I have. You have, but, a, you have a power brain energize the funny brain I think maybe I just need to use it you know I, I almost feel like if I don't learn something so learning is my number one strengths on any st learning and focus are my number one strengths and so maybe that's almost playing into your strengths more you know like you have to feel like you did something for the day you know maybe I, even though you take care of kids maybe it's like I, I feel like I need to do something in the sense of learn something right because that's what feeds me and that's kind of what keeps me going yeah and the only thing i would caution you on is unlike the u.s school system in real life people all learn differently you learn well like you like listening to podcasts it helps you process mm -hmm. i can't listen to podcasts 
How come? If I read it myself, I'll read, remember read it, it forever because sure. I have didactic memory. But that's not how I learned. So the only thing I would say is, yes, mental stimulation is huge. Don't do it after seven o'clock at night, a or mm-hmm. close to your bedtime. But make sure that you're not putting stress on yourself to try to stimulate your brain in a way that doesn't help you learn because you'll yeah. just be frustrated. Yeah, like just because just because that's what works for me or just because that's right. what I like doesn't mean that that's what you need to do. So there's a lot of different learning styles. And you right. might not be, you know, learning might not be something that you care about. So find, right. find what does feed you and yeah. just do that, you know. Um, I think as guys do art, you know, all those things. Let us sing. A lot of yeah. people love to sing. Yeah, dance. It's great for your mind. It's uh, music and math are the same part of your brain. Oh. Uh, and why not? Go sing in your car. I turned music on last night instead of the news, like when I was cooking and stuff. And I thought that was like a nice, it's so simple, but it's such a more positive thing than the music Actually, being able to, being able to sing music is incredibly mentally complex Hmm. because you have to understand rhythm, pace, tone, pitch. There's a million, million, million things that you don't realize your brain is doing. Which brings us straight back to making sure you get rest. Now, <laughs> sleep is <laughs> one circle here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> sleep is one part of rest and it's important physically for your body. You cannot live without sleep. You must do it. It's a priority. Oh, hydration also important for sleep. When you're dehydrated, it's more difficult to sleep. Hmm. Um, the other thing is rest. Dr. Morgan talked about her God walk. That is rest Mm -hmm. because she emptied her brain and blocked basically all the other input. I mean, look at our lives. There is input constantly. I am sitting in my kitchen, in my house with doors closed. I have a phone, a computer. I can hear Tony upstairs on his computer. I can hear people outside. My appliances sing to me because that's what they are. I mean, there is so much stimulation yeah. in our brains. The, the great minds that we think about, Michelangelo, Da Vinci, you know, Sir Thomas More, lived in a time where there was no outside stimulation coming and there wasn't mm-hmm. constant noise. But we have inundated ourselves with constant worthless input. So it is absolutely worth your time to read a book, take a walk, listen to soothing music as hippy dippy as that sounds listen to that like the bubbly googly nature sound music the reason is because Mm -hmm. you focus on it right and you forget all other things which also means you forget stress oh what that i really liked from marie forleo is um create before you consume yes and she says that doesn't necessarily mean create content before you consume content but create energy, you know, by exercising, um, create space in your schedule for relaxation before you go and consume something. So create, I don't know. I feel like that's just like a nice little nugget that people can take differently. Create before. Absolutely. I like the way you said create space. I always look at it as like, this just sounds super weird, but like, (laughs) rearranging the house inside my brain so that I have more floor space. Hmm. The more stress you have, the more input you have, the more crap you've got in your brain, the less room there is for anything else at all, Mm -hmm. including uh, great relationships, uh, creative thoughts, being able to clear space so that you have time and energy to work through a really gnarly problem. Um, you know, I think about these things all the time. And so I try to clear out stuff that doesn't need to be in there. Mm -hmm. And I think I I also like the thought of margin. You know, if you think of a book page, there's not just words lining the entire pages, there's margins because your brain needs the white space to be able to process the words on the page. Absolutely. Really good copywriting and copywriting, meaning creating words um, written words is what I mean when I say copywriting has a lot of white space yeah. because it's easier for your brain to process. It's the first thing you get taught when you do your resume. 
Really? The more tightly packed your resume is, the less likely anyone is to look at it and the less mm-hmm. likely they are to get any value out of it. Your resume needs yeah. to have white space in it. It also delineates importance, you know. Mm-hmm. So, you know, for those of you out there looking for a job, if your resume is darker than it is light, you need to redo it. Feel free to send it to me. <laughs> I have about 12 on my desk right now I'm working for. Wow. So. <laughs> That's cool. That's nice. Yeah. But so anyway, to kind of wrap things up, because mm-hmm. I realized this was a meandering conversation on our part. Uh, it's primarily because, frankly, we're both tired. Yeah. You see it's okay. Of, you see kind yeah. of the lack of focus here. Form follows function. Um, I would simply say that part of self-care, part of the resilience, the boundaries, the being able to resist shame, being able to reprogram your brain to be positive and make healthy choices, all of this comes down to starting with rest, starting with sleep. Sleep is rejuvenation. Sleep is great for your brain. Mm -hmm. All of these things have to start with that or else eventually you will get frustrated, exhausted, and angry. And the minute you introduce emotion into those healthy choices, you stop making them. I think another thing I've heard before is you said sleep is more important than diet and exercise. And I've heard your body can go weeks without food. It can go, you know, uh, oh, several days without water, you can't go too long without sleep. Trust me, that's true. Yeah, and I think, I thought, oh, that's really, that's really true. You know, what, what does your body need first? It needs sleep, then it needs water, and then it needs food. So, I don't know, some more food for thought, pun intended. Boom. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, I can tell you, I have gone a long period of time with zero sleep and rest, and it is physically injuring to your brain. Yeah, it's crazy. It is painful in your head. And when you think about how important your brain is to every other aspect of your life and your longevity for that matter, do you want to do that? So no, and and I think that it has like like two hours a night, it's time to go to the doctor or make some intentional choices or do both. 100% probably do both really go rule out like sleep apnea or all sorts of other things that could be interfering with your sleep. But Absolutely. let's wrap it up now. Next week, we agreed to meet for eight weeks. And so next week is, I think, our eighth week. I don't know. I'm not counting. Yeah. But what we're going to do next week is kind of a summary of the conversations thus far. And then after that, we're going to meet monthly and we'll do a YouTube and podcast every month so that people can just kind of stay in touch with you along your health transformation it's a yes. great source of accountability for you. Um, I, I think yes, Morgan. very brave of you to do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's good. Um, it'll also help people see how I'm progressing. Yeah. So if I have a month where I'm doing a really good job, we'll be able to see why. Yeah. So, uh, and again, it does, it does keep me accountable because, you know, eventually I want to ride that horse and go on that vacation. Mm-hmm. And um, now I really really want to jump out of an airplane super bad. So, um, so maybe that'll be my denouement. The last episode we ever do will be me jumping out. Oh, that'd be cool. Get a little GoPro. All right, my dear. Well, we will sign off today. Everybody, we're going to talk to you again next week. I hope you have a good one. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments below. Absolutely. And sleep tips are welcome. Yes. All right. See you next week, guys. Bye guys. Bye.